Bismillah, Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah. All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the King, the Master, the Sustainer, the Creator of the seven heavens and the earth. And we send peace and blessings upon His beloved Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My brothers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our Rahman. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most giving. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy is infinite, it's infinite. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is capable of all things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves his slave more than the mother loves her child. Allah loves his slave more than the mother loves her child. After one of the after one of the battles, the Sahaba were standing there with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the Sahih Hadith. They were standing there with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And one of the female captives of war, she had lost her son. So she was running around frantically. And then when she finally found her child, she ran to the child and she grabbed her, her baby and she put him onto her breast. And the Sahaba were able to see this expression of love and joy, right? So the Prophet of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who was standing there with them, he said to them, Do you think this mother would ever throw her child into the fire? <coughs> so they said, The oh, Prophet of Allah, there's no way this woman would ever throw her child into the fire. He said, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala loves his slave more than this woman loves her child. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he hates to throw his slave into the hellfire. But it is unfortunate, my brothers, we are the ones that insist. We are the ones that neglect Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are the ones that bring injustice upon ourselves. We are the ones who choose to take the wrong path. We are the ones who we, we are the ones that insist on doing that which displeases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He opens His doors. His mercy is always there. His ability to forgive is always there. But we are the ones that harm ourselves. That's why my brothers on the day of resurrection, when you and I will stand in front of Allah, no excuses will work on that day. Allah's rahmah. Allah's ability to forgive my brothers. In the Sahih Hadith, O oh my slave, O oh my slave, if you come... O oh, my slave, if you come to me with sins that reach the heavens. My slave, if you come to me with sins that reach the heavens. But you don't associate partners with me and you ask me for my forgiveness. My slave, I will come to you with mercy that match your sins. But we are the ones that insist. He sent us a prophet to guide us. But we chose a path other than his path. He sent us a Qur'an to, to guide humanity, but we chose a path other than the path of the Qur'an. Today we try to mix dunya with deen. Today we're trying to mix dunya with deen. It doesn't work that way. There's only one path to Allah. There's only one way you can reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that's the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. His path was the only path that Allah, Allah chose that path. And anything other than the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it will lead you to your destruction. So my brothers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy is there. But we choose to harm ourselves and we choose to neglect ourselves and we choose. So my brothers, in short, you know, this topic is about the month of Ramadan. You know, my brothers, the greatest month of the year is only maybe about 19, 20 days away. A month that the Sahaba used to prepare six months in advance for. The month of Ramadan is the greatest month of the year. What is available for the believers in the month of Ramadan is not available in any other month. The month of Ramadan is my chance and your chance to redeem ourselves. The month of Ramadan is the month that you and I can finally get ahead. The month of Ramadan, my brothers, if you deal with the month of Ramadan correctly, 
if you give the month of Ramadan its haq and its rights, wallahi my brothers, you will go from zero to hero in the month of Ramadan. <coughs> the month of Ramadan is the month of the believers. It's the month of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where you can reach Him. You see my brothers, every single act of ibadah, every single act of worship, we know, we know its reward. Or at least we have an idea of its reward. Everything we've been told. That if you give charity, Allah will do this. If you pray, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you this. If you look after your mother and your father, well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will compensate you. Every act of worship we've been told about, except for the act of fasting. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, fasting is for me and, our, and I shall reward him. I shall reward it accordingly. For the one that fasts, there are two celebrations. The celebration of when he breaks his fast, when he sits down with his family and he breaks his fast, that's the first celebration. The next, the Prophet of Allah says, the next celebration is when you stand in front of Allah and you see the reward of that day that you fasted. Such is the month of Ramadan. The month of Ramadan is the greatest month of the year. The month of Ramadan is the month that every single one of us should be waiting for anxiously. Because the truth is, many of us will not make the month of Ramadan. You know, I've given the talks of Ramadan many times. Sometimes it's two weeks before, sometimes it's a couple of days before. I remember a few years back, back home in Sydney, we had a brother with his cousin and a girl in the back. They had a car accident the night before Ramadan and they all died. So the reality is, is you and I haven't been promised anything. The month of Ramadan, my brothers, is the greatest month. And wallahi, if Allah allows you to see the month of Ramadan, this is a big sign of Allah's love. But the question is, is how are we going to deal with the month of Ramadan? Is the month of Ramadan going to be like every other month for you and I? Are we going to deal with this great month? Like how everyone else deals with this great month. You see, my brothers, the reality is, is the month of Ramadan is the month of fasting. It's the month of Quran. It's the month of Salah. It's the month of Tahajjud. It's the month of Taraweeh. It's the month of charity. It's the month of piety. It's the month of I'tikaf, seclusion. The month of Ramadan is the month that every single one of us is supposed to say goodbye to the world and connect himself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The month of Ramadan is the month where every one of us is supposed to put his head down and work and work and work and work and work and he doesn't raise his head until the day of Eid. But unfortunately today it's the exact opposite. Today the month of Ramadan has become a festive month. It's a month of celebration. It's a month of nightlife. It's a month of hanging out. It's a month of chilling out with the boys. It's the month of, hey, you invite me, inshallah, for iftar, and I'm going to invite you, inshallah, for iftar. It's the month of feasts. It's the month, oh, you know, it's the month where all of our family gets together, mashallah. The month of fasting has become the month of food. The month of the Hajjah has become the month of hanging out. The month of the Quran has become the month of gossip. Did you see? Did you hear? Did you go? Did you come? Tell me what's happening. Tell me what's on the ground. And Muslims, religious Muslims now. We want, we wait for the month of Ramadan. Brother, I love the month of Ramadan. MashaAllah, why do you love it? There's just this buzz in the air. And Allahu Akbar. And what do you do with this buzz? I do anything and everything except which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants me to do. You see, my brothers, one of the names of the day of resurrection is the day of regret. One of the names of the day of resurrection is the day of regret. Why? Because on that day when you stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you realize the opportunities that Allah gave, the chances that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave, the amount of time that we wasted, the amount of bounties and blessings that Allah gave me and I rejected. You will see the weight of all of this when you stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
Today, now, when you and I think of last Ramadan, the Ramadan that, yeah, it came and I didn't do much. Now, today, when you and I talk about it, big deal, you know, better luck next time. Habibi, now you can have that conversation. But when you stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you realize the opportunity that Allah gave you and you realize how you wasted it. Allah says on that day, people will be biting on their fingers. That's the day. That's the day when the young child, his hair will go gray. That's the day when the pregnant woman will lose her load. That's the day when people will be walking around like they're intoxicated. Allah says, nay, they are not intoxicated. Rather, the severity of that day has driven people insane. Madness. Today, you will know, when you look at the Ramadan that passed, you think, yeah, what's the big deal, inshallah? I'm going to try better this year. Habibi, no. On that day, wallahi, you will cry tears of blood. That Allah gave you a bounty. That Allah gave you a gift. That Allah gave you the opportunity. He gave me the chance. And how did I deal with it? How did I deal with it? My brothers, wallahi, if you know the value of the month of Ramadan, your heart would be dancing, bro. Wallahi, the opportunities and the chances that you have, the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the gates of hellfire are closed, the gates of paradise are open, and Allah, imagine the shayateen are chained. This is your chance, this is your moment, this is your opportunity. And where are we, brother? We're in shisha bars, we're playing cards with the boys, we're going for drives. You know, it's not very popular here, but come, come, Wallahi, come to Sydney. Religious brothers, they fish from Isha all the way to Fajr. And we sleep all day. Why? Because the month of Ramadan has become a month of burden now. It's become a month of burden. Hanging out with the boys, catching up with friends and family. It seems nice on the outside, trust me. It seems very nice. The month of Iftar, you invite me and I invite you. And who cares about Maghrib in the Masjid? And who cares about Isha in the Masjid? No, no, let's sit down and chit chat. We can do this all year round. You know, I can invite you all year round. All of a sudden now, all the invites of the world, they fall in the month of Ramadan. Do you think this happens by chance? Do you think shaitan hasn't planned this for centuries to destroy this ummah? You know, Wallahi, it's enough that we're all cracked all year round. Then the one month, the one month that Allah is basically giving you a free ticket. What do we do with it? What do we do? We wasted with them. Yeah, yeah, halal things. It's not haram. Inviting your friends over for dinner. That's halal. It's not haram. But the idea, the concept, brother, it's not the time. Personally, this is not a sunnah. Personally, for me, the month of Ramadan, forgive me, the hell with my wife, the hell with my kids, the hell with my friends. Habibi, this is my month. Please leave me alone. Don't invite me. Don't call me, don't text me. I'm not interested. Leave me alone. This is my chance, man. This is my chance. This is my opportunity. 